8. Mommy S. Barrett Tugboat There's a dilapidated, burned-out tugboat sitting on dry land in Deer Park, Louisiana, with no outward story of where it came from or why it's there. It's heavily rusted and covered in overgrowth, but its name, the Mommy S. Barrett, is still readily visible. Also known as the Pennyman and the Piazza, the Mommy S. Barrett was built in 1921 in Jeffersonville, Indiana. Measuring 146 feet long and 30 feet wide, she began her career as a tugboat and an inspection boat for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers in 1923. When the Army Corps of Engineers retired the vessel in 1947, it went into private ownership. For several years, the Mommy S. Barrett operated as a clubhouse and a floating restaurant in Missouri. In 1981, a couple named Dick and Kathy O. Burl bought the boat and moved it to Kentucky, where it underwent an extensive restoration and continued to function as a restaurant. It also operated as a showboat, boasting a 120-seat theater. The boat was sold again in 1990 with plans to use it as a floating casino, but this vision never came to fruition. In 1995, the Mommy S. Barrett was donated to the town of Rosedale, Michigan, which had no use for it. It ultimately made its way to its current location in Deer Park, Louisiana. In 2017, the tugboat caught fire and was destroyed beyond repair. 7. Secret Ohio Aircraft Graveyard When World War II ended, the U.S. military had a major surplus of equipment and machinery left over from the Allied fight against the Axis powers. In many cases, vehicles that were left to rot nearly 80 years ago remain at the same sites today. In recent years, an urban explorer named Johnny Jew explored one of these vehicle graveyards in Ohio. He stumbled upon the rusting remains of fighter jets and other aircraft that are a far cry from what they would have looked like in their past glory. Jew snapped photos of the deserted plane sitting in the snow, surrounded by trees and what looks like scrap metal. He later said that he was driving around in search of derelict buildings to photograph when he spotted a large open space on his map. He was compelled to further investigate the area and found the plane graveyard, which consists of around 30 rebuilt vehicles. Someone was at the privately owned property, but instead of kicking the curious young man out, they shared some history on the planes and let him snap some photos. In the late 1940s, a scrapyard owner named Walter Soplata started buying decommissioned military aircraft and reassembling them in his backyard. The collection includes a deteriorating F-86D fighter plane, a U.S. Air Force B-25, a vintage Boeing 727, and more. Supplanter's family inherited the site after he passed away in 2010. Since then, his descendants have worked to keep it a secret to prevent scrap metal thieves from stealing parts off the historic pieces. 6. Lake Norman Mystery Wreck While testing out some new sonar equipment in September 2013, Firefighters from the Charlotte Fire Department discovered a plane wreck at the bottom of North Carolina's Lake Norman. It sits 90 feet underwater, near the deepest part of the lake, and isn't visible from the surface. To get a closer look, the fire department sent divers to the site, where they identified the aircraft as a single-engine, single-seat plane. The divers couldn't get the door open, but they searched thoroughly enough to know that there were no human remains inside. A woman named Barbara Anderson heard about the discovery and thought it might be her plane, which went missing 30 years earlier. She eventually learned that her aircraft had rolled into the water and sank when some flight instructors who were using it for training failed to properly engage the brake. Anderson spent years and thousands of dollars searching for her plane, but never found it. As of November 2013, the Federal Aviation Administration was still trying to identify the plane's owner the agency vowed not to remove the aircraft from the water until that determination was made. It's unclear whether the plane's owner was ever found and if they were ever reunited with their aircraft. Have you ever seen a shipwreck in person? Tell us in the comments below and hit subscribe while you're at it. 5. El Way Childress Prairie du Chien is a small, sleepy city of around 5,500 residents located along the Mississippi River in Crawford County, Wisconsin. If you drive through it, you may pass by an old pushboat sitting in a field. 
Nobody seems to know how the 174-foot-long vessel, known as the L. Wade Childress, reached its current location more than 200 miles from where it sank in 1985. Built in 1948, the L. Wade Childress enjoyed a long career on the Mississippi River. It sank near Fort Madison, Iowa, in December 1985 after it was battered by large ice chunks that were flowing through the water during an early freeze. The boat was raised up the following year and then somehow ended up at its current site along Highway K in Prairie de Chien. According to rumors, someone wanted to turn the derelict vessel into a bed and breakfast at one point, but that never happened. It's unclear why these plans failed to come to fruition. The interior of what's left of the L. Wade Childress is mostly empty and falling apart. There's not much to see besides some old bathrooms, a fuse box, and a stove. But the boat remains somewhat of an attraction and a popular topic of discussion and curiosity, perhaps because it's impossible to miss when driving by. 4. Texas Warplane Graveyard In recent years, rumors began to circulate on social media about a property in central Texas filled with Cold War-era U.S. military warplanes. An aviation expert, a Fort Worth Aviation Museum representative, and a railroad worker came together in 2016 in an effort to find the site themselves and learn more about its origins. They found the plane graveyard on an overgrown plot outside the city of Temple. The planes consist of two Grumman F-14 Tomcats and one McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom. Aircraft parts were strewn about the site, and the old fighter jets were covered in weeds. It was clear to the trio that the vehicles had sat at the property for many years, and it was a surprising discovery even among aviation experts. Fort Worth Aviation Museum Executive Director Jim Hodgson told the Houston Chronicle he was disturbed by the plane's neglected condition, which he saw as a disrespect to their role and history as symbols of the country's defense. He got in touch with the Naval Air Systems Command, NAVAIR, which is responsible for maintaining naval aviation aircraft, and was told that the planes were inoperable by the time the former airbase they were at closed down in the 1980s. A contractor was hired to transport the aircraft to a scrapyard, but for some reason they ended up on someone's private property. For one reason or another, it appears as though the person didn't finish the job, leaving history and aviation enthusiasts alike feeling disappointed by how the iconic aircraft were treated. It's unclear why the retired warplanes were dumped at the site, and little information has come to light since news of the discovery first broke. 3. Mallows Bay Ghost Fleet On the Maryland side of the Potomac River, the relatively shallow waters of Mallows Bay are littered with the decaying remnants of hundreds of old ships, including 230 World War I-era U.S. Shipping Board Merchant Fleet Corporation vessels. 100 or more of the wrecks consist of the remains of wooden steamships that were built for crossing the Atlantic Ocean during the Great War. At the time, there was a steel shortage, leaving shipbuilders with no choice other than to improvise and to work with the materials that were available to them. But the ships came with problems, stemming mainly from the use of outdated materials and efforts to build them as quickly as possible. By the time many of the vessels were finished, they were both obsolete and poorly made. Not a single one of the ships crossed the ocean by the time the war ended with Germany's surrender in 1918. By then, there was no longer a steel shortage, and the US military had absolutely no use for the vessels. In the war's immediate aftermath, they were stored in the James River at a cost of around $50,000 per month. Then in 1925, the Western Marine and Salvage Company bought them and towed them to Mallows Bay. But the company soon went bankrupt, and the ships were burned and abandoned. During World War II, the Bethlehem Steel Company recovered any useful metal from the wrecks, several dozen of which remain visible to this day. In the 1960s, environmental activists raised concerns that hazardous materials from the ships might be polluting the bay. A closer look revealed that the local wildlife was actually benefiting from their presence, and that many species had taken up residence among the wrecks. Today, the relatively little-known site continues to function as an artificial reef hosting an array of wildlife. It's a popular destination among canoers and kayakers and was declared a national marine sanctuary in 2019. Visitors are reminded to exercise utmost caution and respect among the wrecks and not to climb onto the ships or take anything, but to respectfully observe 
take photos, and leave the site just as they found it. 2. A Mysterious Jumbo Jet Outside an unused building in McMinnville, Oregon, there's a derelict Boeing 747, famously known as the original Jumbo Jet. At nearly 185 feet long and with a wingspan of nearly 200 feet, it's impossible to miss. The plane's fuselage bears the name of the now-defunct airline Evergreen International Aviation. Founded in 1960, the company once operated worldwide, but it abruptly went out of business in 2013 and filed bankruptcy the following year. The property, where the 747 sits, belongs to a non-profit called the Evergreen Aviation and Space Museum, which is owned by a company known as McMinnville Properties. Back in 2016, the owner ran into money problems, and the museum's assets went into foreclosure. The 747 and other items were slated for sale, but the owner declared bankruptcy at the last minute, putting the sale on hold indefinitely. Speaking to Oregon Live, the foundation's trustee Lisa Anderson said that the organization had tried to negotiate the sale of its assets to satisfy a $2.2 million debt to a construction company after paying $150 million that was owed. But the parties failed to reach an agreement, and the negotiations reached a standstill as the non-profit entered bankruptcy. It took more than six years to finally settle the matter. In 2022, the 747 went up for auction, but there were no bidders, so the matter was reverted back to McMinnville Properties. The company finally owns the 747 and plans to keep it where it is as a permanent fixture of the museum, which it plans to revive. Efforts are being undertaken to restore the 747's appearance, and it'll soon look as good as new. 1. St. Augustine Plain Graveyard In 2009, photographer Walter Arnold discovered a roadside lot filled with historic aircraft in St. Augustine, Florida. He snapped images of the rusting vehicles, unaware that the photos would help his career take off or that it'd someday play an imperative role in spreading the story of the plane's history and how they ended up at the site. The aircraft were identified as Grumman S-2 trackers. Designed and built during the early 1950s, the S-2 tracker was the first anti-submarine warfare aircraft used by the US Navy. It remained in service for the American military until the mid-70s. Arnold recorded the tail numbers on the abandoned aircraft. With a friend's help, he tracked down the names of the pilots who flew the plane during their military careers. One former pilot, George Verney, even found photos of some of the planes from back when they were still in operation. But why and how did they end up on a seemingly random property in northeastern Florida? As it turned out, they were moved there from Davis Monthan Air Force Base in Arizona, the world's largest aircraft boneyard, as part of an agreement to provide Turkey with planes to replace the country's outdated fleet. The deal came after Ayatollah Khomeini took over Iran in 1979 and shut down all US installations throughout the country, including those that were being used to monitor Soviet activity. American authorities agreed to give the planes to Turkey in exchange for being able to establish new listening stations there. At least 11 S-2 trackers made their way to Turkey, but getting the planes there proved to be a time-consuming bureaucratic nightmare. Eight of the aircraft were eventually declared unfit for service and were simply left at the lot. Unfortunately for explorers and history enthusiasts, they were removed in recent years and survive only in photographs. Thanks for watching. Which one of these is the most strange to you? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye.